Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now we are on the verge of a new era for humanity, and that is the rise of artificial intelligence. We already see some of it today in things like Google Now and driverless cars. However, in the next few decades, we're going to see lots and lots of changes. Now, Isaac Asimov wrote these three laws of robotics. And some people think that actually they're a good set of laws for governing future AI. And I'm here to tell you that they're not. So let's remind ourselves of the three laws of robotics. But before we do that, let me tell you about weak AI and strong AI. Now, if you've watched my previous video, you'll know there are two types of AI. Now, weak AI is basically a sophisticated computer program that pretends, that simulates intelligence. So you can ask it questions, it gives you answers, you, you can even ask about the current state of affairs, it will know things, you might even ask its favorite color, it can tell you, but actually it's just a computer program. It might be neural networks, it might be some kind of functions, they might be a combination of the both, but it's still just a computer program. It doesn't actually have self-awareness, it can't do abstract thinking, it certainly hasn't got free will, it's just a computer program that has a very sophisticated user interface. Now the other type of artificial intelligence is what they call strong AI, and that basically means AI that is self-aware. It is a, a mind, it's not just a brain, it has a mind, it can do free thinking, it can do abstract thinking, it's got free will. And basically that's where the difference comes down to it. It's the free will, the ability to choose. I like to put it this way, if we have a weak AI driverless car, you can call it up and say, come and get me from the shopping mall, and it will just obey its programming and come and get you. If you ring up a strong AI and say, come and pick me up, it could say, no, I'm watching a movie, I don't want to, I don't really have the energy right now, I'm doing something else. It has a free will, it is self-aware, it is independent. And those, of course, are very two different things. And that's where the three laws of robotics come into it. How can you have something that's going towards intelligence, going towards strong AI, and yet restrain its actions so it doesn't just do whatever it likes? So I'm reading here from a collection of Isaac Asimov robot stories, and this is the first story called Runaround, where the three rules are explicitly stated. So let's see what it says. Powell's radio voice was terse in Donovan's ear. Now look, let's start with the three fundamental rules of robotics the three rules that are built most deeply into a robot's positronic brain. One, a robot must not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Two, a robot must obey the orders given to it by humans except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And three, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. So there you have it, those three laws. Now, before we go any further, we must point out that all of Asimov's stories are about how those three rules don't work. In fact, that first story runaround is about how a robot is stuck between laws two and law three. The law, it wanted to obey a command given to it, and yet it wanted to protect its own existence. So it was running towards something to fulfill a command, but when it got there, it found out it was in danger, so it started to run back again. And in fact, it then just started running around in a circle. And in fact, this is a common problem in computer science in general. If you have a thermostat for your room, for example, and you set it to a certain temperature, what you don't want is a room to get to that temperature and then to drop down by even 0.1 of a degree and then the heating would come back on again and then it would go back to the temperature and then it would switch off and then it would go down and you would basically get your heating going on off, on off, on off, on off all the time. So what you actually do is you build in a range. You say when it gets up to this, then it drop down by this, then go back up again. And in fact, that's a simple thing in computer science. But what Asimov is showing here is that when you state things explicitly like this, they can be easily misinterpreted. So let's look at rule number one, for example. No harm should come to a human being. Well, that's easy when you're looking at the ideas of a car is about to crash into somebody and a robot dashes across the road, grabs you and drags you out away of the car. That's great, but what does harm mean? I mean, physical harm, emotional harm, psychological harm. I mean, there's so many different ways to define the word harm. Now, in the books, actually, Asimov goes to the logical conclusion that actually robots are allowed to lie because if they tell someone the truth, they could actually be harming them emotionally. So obviously that doesn't work. 
What about things like smoking or fast food? Smoking is considered across the world to be dangerous, harmful to your health, and yet there are millions of people that choose to smoke. And therefore, if this rule was implemented literally, robots would have nothing to do other than to go and pull cigarettes out of people's mouths because they say they were harming them. Or what about fast food? If you eat too much fast food, too much saturated fats, too many bad ingredients, it's gonna do you harm. So do robots march around closing down uh, rest fast food restaurants? I mean, what does harm mean? It's a, such an ambiguous definition that it's no good for the context of uh, defining the behavior of a robot. And ultimately, Asimov wrote a story where he showed that harm could be interpreted as not harm to a human, but harm to humanity. And therefore you have the rise of the machines as they try to take over actually to protect humanity from our own errors and from our own bad um, actions. And what about this idea? It has to obey a rule from a human. Well, which human? I mean, is a three-year-old the same as a 10-year-old? Is a 10-year-old the same as a 30-year-old? Is a normal citizen the same as a police officer? Is a police officer the same as a member of a parliament? You can just keep defining roles again and again and again. So if a three-year-old says to a robot, let's jump up and down on the sofa, actually a robot's probably gonna be pretty heavy and it's gonna wreck that sofa pretty quickly. But however, it was obeying a command and no humans came to harm. Of course, when mum and dad come home, they'll say, what are you doing on our sofa? And it will immediately stop. But it, those rules don't define whether it should listen to a three-year-old or not. The problem with the three rules is there's no moral compass. It's got no way of knowing what's right and what's wrong. So for example, let's say you have a driverless car, you send it out, go and get me some fast food. And it drives to the fast food place and you find out it's closed. So it looks on its map and it says, right, there's a pizza place 50 miles away. And so off it goes to the 50 mile away or Peter. Now, that's not the right thing to do, obviously. Now, at some point, it maybe it would need to have further instructions from its owners. But how does it know the difference between what's good and what's bad? The three rules don't tell it that. Now, maybe going an extra 50 miles for a pizza wouldn't be a good idea, but if you had a sick child, and you were desperate to get some medication and the nearest open available source of that medication was 50 miles away, you'd probably want the robot to go and get it. But how does it choose? Those three rules don't tell it anything. They don't help define what's right and what's wrong. Now, we as humans, we look at what's right and what's wrong every single day. And sometimes we get it right and sometimes we get it wrong. And there are debates even at a national level about what is right and what is wrong, what is moral and what is immoral. Now, how does a robot get that? Does it get that by looking at a data set of people's actions? Does it study what humans do and then define what is right and what is wrong? Because actually, if you look at what we do as humanity, then actually there are some pretty terrible things that we do and you wouldn't want a robot to take over from those things, to learn from those things. So then there's the question of can morality be learned from a data set? And what about the people who are programming the robots? Do they program their morality into it rather than something that another group of people would consider to be right or consider to be wrong? And what about the idea that we all want to be better than we really are? We all want to be different, but yet we find there's a weakness in us that means we can't always do the things we want to do. Now, surely you wouldn't want a robot to have that. You'd want the robot to be a perfect moral character. Where does it get this morality? It certainly doesn't get them from the three laws of robotics. So as we're defining the progress of artificial intelligence, we are starting to need to ask questions about free will and about morality, because those things will define how a robot behaves, not whether it should just pull a person out from in front of a car or not. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video, a look at the future. Now, why we're looking at this is because we are on the verge of things. We've got self-driverless cars. We've got Google's AI are already doing so many different things on the internet. I even read that there are now recruitment agencies that are using AI to scan through CVs. So if your CV doesn't match up to what the AI is expecting, you don't even get called for an interview. We know that Google search results are controlled in a certain way, and I'm sure there are different types of weak AI involved involved in that searching and how that is filtered for different people, for different regions, for different types of search results. We're going to be finding AI creeping into so many different things. And the question is, where does it get its guidance about what's right and what's wrong? Also, if you want to talk more about this, come over to the Android Authority Forum. There's a special topic that I've opened there just so that we can discuss the three laws of robotics. I look forward to seeing you there. 
Well, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram and on Google+, and you can follow Android Authority the same on all those social media networks. Don't forget to download the Android Authority app, and don't forget to go to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android. Thank <laughs> you.